So now that we have our alert boxes styled, we're now going to handle the JavaScript uh, to actually close this. And we're going to be doing this a little bit differently. We're going to be using jQuery, yes, but we're going to be using CSS transitions to fade these out when a user clicks on the close button. So the first thing we need to do then is pull jQuery uh, into our project. So I'm going to use uh, Google hosted libraries. If you just Google for that, we're going to pull in uh, jQuery version 2.1.3. So we can copy and paste this link directly into our project. So if we go to the bottom of the page here, let's create a script tag with a source attribute and just paste that in. So now when we refresh, we have jQuery loaded into our page ready to go. So inside of this JS directory, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call this alert.js or you can call it uh, alert.jQuery.js, whatever you want to do. So We've got this uh, JavaScript file. We can start uh, writing our very small plugin. We'll be doing this step by step and testing uh, it along the way. So what we need here is a function, which is going to, um, when it's run, it's going to pass in jQuery. And this is the essentials of building a jQuery plugin. And in here, we give our jQuery dollar sign. So now what we're going to do is attach our plugin to jQuery's uh, function scope. So we're going to say uh, $for jQuery dot fn for function alert equals function like so. So all this is going to do is any element that we attach this plugin to or run this plugin on is going to do something. So we can just console log something here. So what I'm going to do is load this in. So I'm going to say script source JS jQuery, uh, what was it, alert.js. And down here, I'm just going to do this in line, but obviously you would want this in a separate JavaScript file. We'll just keep this on the page to avoid having to create another file just for now. So what are we targeting? Well, we're targeting any element with the alert class, and then we're going to apply our plugin to that now. So now what's going to happen is when we refresh, we see something output. Now you notice we only see this output once. What we need to do is we need to target each element that's created um, because otherwise we're not targeting um, all three. We're only targeting the first element here. So um, we can see this evidently by saying uh, console.log this dot attribute class and that will give us alert that's only targeting the first alert not these two here so what we need to do then is we need to return this dot each so for each element that we are targeting with this plugin we run this callback so now i can console log this dot attribute class and what we'll see is all three so that means that we're targeting all three of these we're running whatever's within this function on all three so as a little shortcut what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a variable called self and that's going to reference this just so we don't have to keep doing this over and over again so what we need to do now is we need to target this close element here here and here within each of these. So we're going to say self.on click. We want to target the close class. And then once that close button is clicked, we want to do something. So we're going to say console log closed, just so we can see that this is working. So when I hit X here, we get closed. X here, we get closed again. This two just means that it's been output twice and we click again and we get three. So we now know this is working. We can do something in here which closes these elements. Now what you could do is just do self.remove if you wanted to. All that would do is just remove that element. So this works just as normal. So it's perfectly fine to do that if you want to. But what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding a close class to the actual alert here. So we'll end up with this. Now the reason that we do this is so we can use CSS transitions. 
rather than using jQuery animation, we're going to rely on CSS to transition this, and then it'd be nice and smooth. So inside of our CSS file, we need to define how this transition is going to happen. So what we want to do then is the alert is going to have a de default opacity of one. We don't really need to define the opacity here as one because it will already be an opacity of one. What we need to do though is when this close class is applied, we want to reduce this opacity to something like 0.3. Well, it will be zero, but you can see how this uh, affects it. So let's get rid of that. And here we're going to say alert.close. Now, with this class attached to our alert class or this class alongside of our alert class, we want the opacity to be zero. So what we can do is from our JavaScript, we can say self dot add class close. So now what's going to happen is when we click this, what we've done is we've added this class here. You can see that class has been added, but now we have an opacity of zero. The only problem with this is that because we have an opacity of zero, the element still actually exists on the page. So it's still, um, you know, giving us that spacing that that element is, is giving on the page. So what we need to do is we need to detect when the transition has finished, then remove it from the page because we don't need it anymore if the user has dismissed it. So what we want to do is we want to say self, we need to attach an event handler. Now the event handlers here are transition end. We also have uh, support for WebKit as well, transition end. This is the, uh, that's a capital E. This is the default um, event handler. This is the default uh, event, sorry, that's thrown. And then we have O for Opera transition end, like so. So if any of them are uh, called or fired, sorry, we're going to console log uh, transition finished. So what that's going to do is when we click this, pay attention to the console just down here when I click this and it doesn't look like that's worked. So let's just check this. And of course we actually forgot to add the transition, which is really important. So what we're going to do then is, um, I should have noticed that we're going to actually add the transition just in here. So um, I'm in Chrome. Uh, you're going to want to head, go ahead and look up the vendor prefixes that you uh, require for transitions. So in my case, I'm going to say WebKit transition. We're going to transition on the opacity. We're going to have this last for say one second. We can change this to like 0.2 seconds if we want. Uh, and then we're going to say ease in. So I'm going to duplicate this down. I'm going to add the standard prefix. Go ahead and, like I said, check these and make sure that you're using the vendor prefixes that are required. And let's take a look at this now. Uh, when I hit this, you can see that actually fades out now. And because uh, the uh, transition end um, and WebKit transition end or O transition end has been fired, we now get this transition finished message just here. But we still haven't solved our problem. All we're doing is logging in the console that the transition has finished. What we now want to do is say self.remove. Now, the whole reason that we do this is because if we remove this up here, for example, so if we were to take this, move it here, we'll just comment this out, um, the element will be removed before it's had a chance to actually transition. So the reason that we put it down here once the transition is finished is because we have that nice transition out and then we can go ahead and remove the element because we know that the transition has finished. So if I hit this now, you can see it fades out, then removes, fades out and removes, fades out and removes. And there we go. So with very little effort, we've built the styles for the alert boxes that fit any container, look nice. You can change the colors depending on the different styles that you want for each alert box. And we've gone ahead and built a very simple uh, jQuery plugin to handle closing the element with CSS transitions.